Hello everybody. So, after the last video that I posted, um, we were obviously in Anchorage and now I am home. I did not vlog the rest of that trip and I'm gonna go over in this video what happened, why it happened, and all of that. So if you are new here, please go watch this video. It's kind of kind of explains like what's going on. Um, basically over the last like 10 months, my son's really declined, hasn't been able to get off the floor, go up the stairs. Um, we ended up getting a wheelchair for him because he just could not go long distances. I've been fighting and fighting to get some answers on this. Um, it has now been two months of solid like fighting and we still, you're gonna see what's going on with that. Go ahead and get a cup of coffee, some tea, some water. This is gonna be a long one. So, oh, <sighs> what happened? Landon had to be at Providence Medical Center. So we woke up, I kind of got some coffee. I woke him up and kind of got him going after I had gotten all ready, got him ready to get out the door. We got in the car to leave and the car was like completely frosted over like, you could not see out of the windows. We're actually like 15 minutes late to the hospital, which I felt so terrible about. I am not that type of person. They even like called me when I was downstairs at the hospital and I just underestimated everything that morning. The wheelchair ended up working super great for Landon. It's perfect size and the hospital is really big. So even just like the stint from the car into where he needed to be was long. So I was able to like just push him in and get in there quickly. And he was comfortable. He was not, you know, in pain in any way. So we got in there. The nurse was kind of like, we gotta kind of hurry cause we were like a little bit late. And so we were trying to like get everything going. We got his, they got his IV going and did all the questions and the paperwork and all that. We were just kind of sitting there and this is kind of the only day I like picked up the camera at all. Um, I had planned on vlogging when we got back to the hotel, but as you will see, we did not get back to the hotel. <laughs> we were just kind of hanging around. Um, they were going to do the MRI and I requested that he be sedated because it's so long and you have to sit so still and I knew it was really important to get like really clear images. But I talked to the anesthesiologist and he was kind of like, because he has muscular issues going on, it makes me really nervous to sedate him if we don't have to. Basically, less medicine, the better. He was a little bit concerned about sedating him longer than he needed to be because he has muscular issues going on. He said he could have problems swallowing, um, breathing, and all of that, and he was there to help if that needed to take place. But he just figured with the MRI, we would try to do it unsedated and if he needed it, then we would pull him out and give him sedation. So that's what we did. We went ahead and da headed downstairs at Providence and did the MRI and he actually did really well. They had little tiny goggles on him where he could watch a show. He had like little um, headphones on where there was a microphone so they could talk to him. And so it wasn't as loud as if you were just in there. Um, I got to go in and sit with him in the MRI area. They had to do like a little metal detector on me to make sure because an MRI is basically a big magnet, I believe. And I don't know how it works. It's extremely loud. I have a funny story in this. So I wear these lashes, which are magnet lashes. <laughs> they did the little detector on me and nothing went off and I was good. and. I walk in there and I went to go like rub his leg and my eyelids were like, Boop. <laughs> I was like so I had to like take them off and put them in my purse. Not a big deal. It was just, I just thought it was really funny. So he was able to get through the whole MRI. He sat perfectly still after like 45 minutes. I was so exhausted and just, I didn't sleep good. Cause you know, the night before a procedure, you just, you think you're going to oversleep and all of that. So I was like, he's got his headphones on. Like I can't even talk to him right now. He's done totally fine. Hasn't asked for me. I'm going to go get a cup of coffee. So I ran down to the cafeteria and got my coffee and a little yogurt and I was going to eat it real quick. And I figured I'd be back before they got done. And I set my coffee on the table and went to go sit down. And the radiologist came in and told me that he was asking for me. And I felt so, so bad, but I got back there and he was doing totally fine. He had like 15 more minutes left on the MRI, ended up getting through the whole thing and was like sat so, so still. I was so proud of him. At that point, Landon got pretty nervous about everything. 
he was just, it was just a lot for the poor little guy. Like the MRI I think was a little overwhelming because of everything. They did end up doing his spine and his brain in the scan, which I'm really glad they did both. After that, we went back up to the room. We kind of just like hung out there for a little while. And then the team came into the room and it was so nerve wracking. At this point, I was just like, oh my gosh, I just don't want him to like be uncomfortable and I don't want him to be scared. And he was just he was just really uneasy. He just didn't know what to expect and I mean really neither did I. I had one of you comment on one of the videos about like I just want to prepare you when you see your child sedated and I am so thankful for that comment because I didn't think about that like seeing them sedated right in front of you. It's it's disturbing. Um, it was disturbing is like the only thing I can think of. I mean, your child basically turns into a vegetable and that was really, really hard to watch. Um, as soon, as soon as they kind of prepared everything, he had the IV in, the anesthesiologist was there, there was two doctors and then there was a nurse and they were just in his room. So they didn't have to like go into like a, an OR or anything like that. Oh, so they prepared him. The anesthesiologist gave him the medicine and at that point I asked if he was going to remember any of it because the the sedation that they gave him, I've, I don't know what it's called, but it basically makes you like hallucinate and um, it's just a lot safer on the respiratory system and with him having those muscular issues he wanted to use that one versus like the stronger one that he might have to end up having to help him breathe or swallow or any of that stuff. It was like the safer route for sedation, but they are like halfway awake, like their eyes are open. And he said sometimes they even talk. Landon did not. He basically, his eyes were open and he was kind of like making noises, but he was just like not moving at all. And it was just as soon as he like went to sleep, um, I just like lost it because it was really hard to see him like that. <sighs> they went ahead and did the lumbar puncture. The spinal fluid looked really clear, which is a good thing. They even let me take a picture of it because I wanted to show him when he got done. I told Landon they were taking fluid out of his back. I did not go into detail on how they were going to do that. Um, and then after he got out, I kind of told him what they did. It just sounds scarier than it really is, I feel like. But I did get to show him the fluid and he thought that was pretty cool. He's a very visual kid, so like if he can see something or, you know, it's it's just it's just more fun for him. He understands it a little more. A few people did warn me about this, but coming out of sedation is pretty hard, especially on kids. Like I said, this was a like hallucinating one, so He's really into Minecraft. When he woke up and could say anything, he kind of went from like moaning to like trying to rip his little oxygen thing off. And then he started crying. They're very emotional when they're coming out of sedation because they just, everything is just weird and he was like hallucinating. So like everything was like square to him. The poor kid just didn't like, like didn't know what to do. He just, he was just upset that he didn't know why he had to go through that and uh, This was by far like the hardest day in the hospital because I just, I just, I had a hard time like seeing him go through that even though like I fought and fought to get him like tested and all this. I just, it was hard. Um, so he was coming out of the sedation and we were trying to get him like to where he was feeling good. He was very nauseous. He was emotional. His stomach hurt. Like just, I just wanted him more comfortable before we left the hospital. And so we were kind of taking our time. Like he was able to eat something and drink something and the nurse was going to take the IV out. And I said, let's just wait a little bit. I just want to make sure like he handles coming out of sedation. Okay. And let's just hang out a little bit longer. By the time we were about to leave the hospital, cause it was just supposed to be a, like you go in for the procedure and then we were gonna go back to the hotel afterwards and we were just waiting for him to come out of that sedation. So in the meantime, miraculously, thank you Lord, 
the MRI results came back, which is they said is like unheard of to be that fast. The doctor came in and said that they had gotten the MRI results back and she said that it showed lesions on his spine. Basically his spinal cord was being attacked by his own body and that they needed to start him on strong steroids and another antibody medication and he was being admitted immediately to the hospital. Um, they were going to do four days of steroids and four days of this antibody medicine in the IV. That's kind of what happened, and at that point, I was a little bit overwhelmed, and like, I didn't really understand everything. Basically, they knew at this point that it was some type of autoimmune issue going on, and his own body was attacking his own spinal cord, and they didn't know what kind of autoimmune disorder it was, but they knew his own body was attacking his spine and they were worried about his vision um, because normally things like this, your eyes have problems, his eyes did not. So we were kind of at a point where we knew it's autoimmune, but we really don't know what type of autoimmune it is. They ran a bunch of blood work on him and most of it does not come back for about a week, which is like the frustrating thing in all this. It takes like a week or two weeks or three weeks for all these test results to come back. For the autoimmune, it's kind of all the same treatment. Um, it's steroids and this like antibody medication. And so we knew we were gonna give that to him and continue to like run some blood work. Because it's been such a roller coaster of everything and them telling me they might be something and then it not, I had a hard time just accepting that it was going to help him at all. So they were going to give him this medication and they didn't know if he was going to get any function back at all, if it was gonna stop it. Like it's everybody is different and we weren't sure how his body was going to react to this. The medication was pretty rough on him, um, not throughout the whole day, but for about an hour to three hours out of the day, he was he just got really like cold sweaty and like sick. Some days he would like actually get sick. While we were in the hospital, they actually had a physical therapist and an occupational therapist come in and kind of work with him to make sure that he was staying strong. Um, that's gonna be really important is recovery process. So it was a four day hospital stay. We were in the PICU, which is pediatric ICU, but I think only because they didn't really have a lot in the pediatric area. So they're trying to put everyone in one area. And so it was just one big open room. We tried to make the best out of it. Um, it was a pretty, it was pretty chill in there. I mean, it was just me and him. I was only allowed to leave the hospital once a day because of all the COVID stuff going on. My heart hurts for all the parents that do have kids in the hospital right now because it's just such a crazy time. It was already a difficult time and then to like not be able to like step away for a minute. It was like I just couldn't process much because I wasn't, I didn't, well, I really wasn't able to step away. It makes a hard situation just a little bit harder. While we were in the hospital, I actually had our sweet friends, Adam, Sherry, and Auburn, um, I placed an order for Target and because like we brought clothes for like three days and we were end up we ended up being there for a week so I needed some extra stuff I just it was just kind of like random stuff like I needed socks and I got an extra pair of pajamas because I brought like my crusty pajamas like the comfy ones but they're just like not cute at all <laughs> because I just went on staying in the hotel ended up getting a gingerbread so we could build a gingerbread in the hospital um, so thank you Adam and Sherry and Auburn for bringing that over. They ended up bringing him the sweetest package ever and I should have filmed it, but I was just so overwhelmed in the hospital. They brought like a little like sweet gift. There was like a little hex bug battle bot that he gave them. There was a Bob Ross cookbook, which was like so sweet. A little like Christmas cookie magazine. All this like just super thoughtful stuff for us and I don't know, it just made my heart melt. So we ended up building that little gingerbread and it was just very good for him to just kind of like pick up the beads and put them on the house. It was just very good for his hands because his hands had lost quite a bit of strength. Um, we just spent a whole night building this beautiful gingerbread and just made some good memories. Another day we just ended up playing like card games and just, I just kind of used the time to like make it a fun 
day with mom even though he had to have this IV hooked up to him all the time and he's getting these medications we took we used it as a time to just hang out and you know have fun during this whole stay the steroids really helped Lannon and he like improved dramatically over the first like two days just like blew my mind that he was able to um, like sit by himself or stand up by himself or um, be able to open things. He was just getting his confidence back. He had kind of just lost it a little bit because he had just been struggling so much. And to see that like come back was just so encouraging. His walk was less swayed. Um, if I don't know if you've noticed in the, any of the last videos, his legs just weren't working well. So he kind of had to swing his hips and he would kind of like go side to side. It was just a sign that like his legs were not working great. And that was almost completely gone when we were in the hospital. Um, he was not like all the way back to like, you know, full strength, normal muscles for an eight year old, but he improved a lot. And that was like really encouraging. And, and I was still like, it was still there. Like, ah, is it gonna stay? And they did expect it to decline slightly. So with steroids, you have this like peak. And then when you kind of taper off of them, um, you kind of decline a little bit. The day we were getting out, I really noticed like a little drop in, in his progress. And I debated whether we should stay at the hospital, but I was like, you know what, let's go get a good night rest and see how he does. Um, we'll stay in Anchorage for a couple days in case he does need to come back. So we did get out of the hospital. So we got out of the hospital Thursday and he, he had like a pretty good day that day. And then Friday we hung out in Anchorage and we just didn't really do a ton. We ended up going to Target, got some Texas Roadhouse and brought it back to the hotel. So Friday he did really well that whole day. And I was like, okay, he must, he must be over it. They're not giving him the medication anymore. Maybe he's good. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna book a trip home tomorrow and um, we'll just get home and you know, he'll be more comfortable in his own house. So we booked like a 1.30 flight to come home. And starting like Friday night, he was saying he wasn't really, really feeling that well. And he ended up going and laying down and going to sleep like by himself after we got back and got some dinner. Um, which I thought was kind of weird. He told me he wasn't really feeling that well and I was kind of like, okay, well, he's probably just tired. Like we just ended up going to Target and you know, that's, that's a lot for his little body. And I mean, he's, he wrote on the cart a good portion of it. We go to leave the next morning and he's just really kind of puny. And I was like, okay, well, it, you know, it's only a 45 minute flight. So let's try to get home. We headed to the airport and we got there super early because I just wanted extra time to be able to get through security, be able to do all of that. With him being in a chair and me having to like pull luggage and I had a backpack and all that, I wanted to make sure we had enough time to where we weren't stressed and he wasn't stressed and just, just very low key. So we got to the airport super early. I think we were there like two and a half hours early and the airports are just like so crazy quiet that it was like we literally just like walked through security almost we did get flagged like i've never had this happen before but we went through security and when you go through security if you can get out of your wheelchair they have you walk through the metal detector and then they bring your chair around and they have to like pat it down and do all that this is really crazy because landon was asking like what they're doing and i'm like one of those parents i like to explain everything so i'm like oh they're you know they're checking for like explosives like if people are trying to do crazy things to the plane they're just making sure we're safe and so i'm like explaining this to him and then they like take the little like thing that they wiped all over his chair and put it in the machine and it like turns red and it is like flagged for something. And I was like, hello? So then they get all like crazy, which I mean, I kind of understand, but there, there's no reason to be rude. Like I'm not trying to do anything. My kid needs his chair cause he's like pretty wobbly and sick at this point. They asked where our stuff was and they like grab it all. He was like, oh, are these your shoes? And I was like, I was like, oh yeah, um, can I put those on? And he was like, no don't touch anything i was like oh my gosh i was like holy smokes what in the world i've never never had anything like that happen so then they had to go through like all our bags which i understand but like no no reason to be rude like <laughs> i don't know 
there was one guy that was really sweet there. Anyways, so we get through and we're just like straight hanging out at the airport. He just kind of told me a few times that like he wasn't feeling very good and his head hurt pretty bad. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, bud. Like we're almost home. I didn't have any like Tylenol or anything cause it was liquid. So I had put it in our like checked bags. So we're just like hanging out there. And right before we go to get on the plane, he was like, mom, my head hurts really bad. And he's sitting there and he's like holding it. And he's like almost in tears. And I was like, I was like, oh bud, can, do you think we can just get on the plane? And it's only a 45 minute flight. And he was like, yeah. And there was like definitely hesitancy, hesitancy in his voice. And I should have listened to that. But we go to get on the plane and we're the first, you know, few on because he is in a wheelchair and he takes a little bit more time. So we get on the plane and he starts to like really not feel good. And he starts to gag. And then, so I'm like holding a bag. He's just like miserable. And he's like almost in tears, but he doesn't want to cry because he's on the plane. So then the whole plane gets loaded and at that point he was so just sick feeling and terrible feeling that I was like, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to take this flight. I don't want to push him through this just to like get home a little bit sooner. So I like asked the stewardess if we could get off the plane and she was like, absolutely. They were like the nicest people ever. As soon as he like stepped off the plane into the little like platform area where you wait for strollers and wheelchairs and stuff like that. He ended up getting sick and I did have the bag, but it still kind of made a mess and I felt really bad. So I'm like, I can clean it up. Like, it's fine. I understand like there's a lot of germs and stuff right now, like especially right now. And they were like, absolutely not. We will clean it up. You go take care of your son. And like, I was like literally in tears cause I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is like so much for him to go through. And then for like, to have to like do this right here in public. And I just felt really bad for him. Um, so we decided to get off the plane and we were like, we'll just book a later flight. So I go book a later flight, the 4.30 flight. And I was like, he can just like lay down. So I put him in a chair and he was like laying down on my lap and he, he fell asleep for a little while. And I thought for sure he was gonna like wake up and like it be tolerable. That did not happen. He woke up and he was in tears because his head hurt so bad. And this was like, this was five days after the lumbar puncture. So it didn't even like occur to me that it could really be from that. I heard that normally happens pretty quickly, like the first like 24 to 48 hours. When he woke up from his nap and was not feeling good, I said, that's it. We're just gonna go get you in a hotel. We can take a later flight. I want you comfortable. The sweet ticket agent there was so nice. I was like standing in line and he was, you could just tell he was miserable. She saw me and she just said, do not stand in line. You go get him comfortable and you just call the reservation area and let him know what happened and it'll be just fine. Do not, don't waste any more time. So we go and re-rent a car and we re-rent a hotel and we get in there and he lays down and he's just, just not feeling good. I call the nurse line at the hospital, let him know he's getting sick and he's got this like crazy headache. And she says, he needs to go to the emergency room right away. And I was like, oh my gosh, like one more thing this poor kid has to do. She said what it could be. It was very scary sounding. I don't think that was, could have actually been an issue, but she just said to get him to the emergency room. So we went back to Providence emergency room, which is a whole nother world. Holy smokes. Like it was like a reality show in there. Drunks walking in off the street. There was like druggies in chairs and handcuffs with cops around them. There was like sick people everywhere. It was literally like a reality show. They did get him back right away. Um, he was still getting sick. They gave him some medicine, some anti-nausea medication and some Benadryl. Um, the Benadryl like wiped him out completely, puts him like to sleep right away. And I mean like a hard sleep. <laughs> so, he kind of just slept in the ER. Um, they did take some x-rays of his lungs and stuff and he was totally fine. They just kind of just chalked it up to either the medication or the lumbar puncture and um, wrote us a prescription for some anti-nausea medication that is kind of like helps with like migraines too. It was like five or six hours we were in the ER, which is, was crazy. But I mean, they were like insane in the ER, like so crazy. We went back to the hotel that night and I was like, you know what? I don't know when we're gonna fly home. I was like, if I need to drive him home, 
with the rental car that is what i'm gonna do because i did not want to make him go through that again just like being in public he was already uncomfortable and then being in public is just it's just not something i ever want to put him through again um, and if I had to drive eight hours home, then that's what we would have done. He actually woke up the next day and we got some breakfast in him and he was like perked up and I was like, what? So I waited until the very last minute. Um, at that point we had no luggage because it had all gone home on that flight the day before. So we really didn't have anything to pack up. We just had my backpack, which was like my nothing essential by any means. It was like his iPad and my computer and just like randomy stuff. I booked the next flight out and we literally just like got up and went to the airport and I was like, bud, if you're not feeling good still, we do not have to get on the plane. Let's just, let's just try since you seem to be feeling good. And so we ended up making it home. That was a solid week. We had left Sunday of the week before and we had flown home on a Sunday. So it was a long trip. I am still having a hard time with like understanding everything. I'm kind of like numb to it just because of the whole roller coaster of things. Um, so basically in short, we know it's autoimmune, but we don't know what type of autoimmune. And um, in order to specifically treat what he has going on, we do need a diagnosis. So we had a Zoom meeting with his neurologist just this past Tuesday that was pretty discouraging. Um, I mean, it's a good thing. He tested negative for everything that they had tested him for. At this point, what he has going on, he's a very rare case of what he has and he needs a specialist. And that specialist is in Seattle, Washington. And she told me that it takes them about three or four weeks to even like look at their case. And then she's like, it could be like February before they even um, schedule you in, I'm not sure. And at that point I was like, oh my gosh, here we go again. Like, I don't want any more damage done to his spinal cord. Um, she told me to watch out for like blindness and like numbing and tingling in his hands and legs and like loss of movement. Like if he's just not able to move an arm or a leg and that to me was very scary. And again, went into like fight mode <laughs> and I have just, it's the power of prayer, man. 100%. Um, I was pretty discouraged on Tuesday, like really discouraged. And I was pretty like defeated feeling. People asked how they could pray. And I said, I, I want him to be seen sooner. I just don't want any more spinal cord damage. Obviously it's important to stop it, but I also want to make sure that it's not like continually happening. So those prayer warriors got out there and I went ahead and contacted Mayo again and let them know I was sending, having the records sent over and wanted to see if they could do anything, but it kind of sounds like they don't even have anybody that specific. I called Seattle Children's myself <laughs> and I basically begged them to see him sooner. And uh, she said, we have January 8th available. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get you booked for this, but I'm gonna contact the doctor and see if she's willing to like open up a spot. Basically, they need to look at it and say, you know, is this important enough? Which I understand that. Um, you can't just say, oh, my kid's having headaches. I need to have them seen tomorrow. You know, I, I understand they need to like look at the case and, and see if it's emergent enough to open up a spot. So I called and uh, begged them and was like, I just, I just don't want any more damage done to a spinal cord. Like I pleaded with them. I was never rude. Um, if you were dealing with this stuff, you do not have to be rude to, uh, to get people to just be compassionate. Um, they could hear the nervousness in my voice of like waiting until January 8th for him to be seen, which I knew just did not mean that it was going to happen just because I wanted it, but I was going to fight <laughs> and fight until I, I couldn't. And um, so we got a call yesterday morning and they opened up December 15th for us. And I am so, so grateful for that. Um, Landon and I are going to be flying to Seattle on December 14th and he has his appointment on the 15th. Uh, we have a ticket back on the 18th, but we don't know if he's only needs to go down for that one day or if 
we need to be there uh, for a week or two weeks, whatever it is. Obviously we would like to be back for Christmas. So that is the full update. This has been really good for me to just kind of sit here and talk about it. Um, like I said, it's hard for me to accept that's that's what's going on because we don't really have a diagnosis yet. And um, even though we know it's autoimmune, we just it's just not a full diagnosis. So it's a little bit hard for me to like process everything. And that's what's taken me so long to do this update. We got back from Anchorage, I think two and a half weeks ago, and it has just been until now that I said, okay, I feel good. I need to just talk about it. There was minimal tears in this video. <laughs> I just appreciate all of you. I have been posting quite a bit on Instagram, especially when we were in Anchorage and stuff. Um, so if you don't follow us there, go follow us here because I just, I post more daily stuff and um, not all the time. Sometimes I post a lot, sometimes I don't post at all, but, uh, I might have some more updates on all of that. So if you guys know any good hotels around Seattle Children's Hospital, I would love to hear them. I don't know Seattle at all, and it's a little nerve wracking because we're like little town people. <laughs> so going to this giant city just is very, a little bit nerve wracking. All right, I am going to end this one. I'm sorry it's so long, but I wanted to get kind of the full update out. I would like to start vlogging again just have some normalcy in our lives. I've realized like just the normal things that we do are so important right now. And so I would like to do some vlogging and I can kind of show you his progress on how he's doing. Thank you guys so much for all you have done for our family, the prayers, the love, everything you guys have sent us. I just, I appreciate you guys so much. Knowing that you guys are just there and it's just been amazing to have you guys as a support system and everybody just holding us up. We've had a pretty amazing support team and to have that is makes all the difference when you're going through all of this. So I appreciate all my family, my friends, um, you guys, everybody. All right, we will see you in the next one. Bye.